Oh my god. Yeah. That's so good. There's like good. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. I really hope you enjoyed watching me hike the Three Capes track in Tasmania. I certainly had a lot of fun taking on this challenge and finally ticking it off my bucket list. The Three Capes track stretches 48 kilometers along the southeast coast of Tasmania and is home to some of the largest sea cliffs in Australia. This hiking experience goes for four days and three nights and is one of the most popular multi-day hikes in the country. Along the way, you'll pass by heaps of different scenery including rainforest pockets and towering sea cliffs and and I didn't find the hike all that challenging, so most fit people should be able to tackle it. Okay, so what do you actually have to book to do the Three Capes hike? So the first thing that you'll need is a booking, which costs $596 for one adult or $476 for a concession or child. And this is pretty expensive, but it includes a whole bunch of activities, which I'll go through in a sec. One thing to note is that you'll need to book this hike a few months ahead, as it usually books out during the summer months. I was lucky enough to snag a last minute spot during summer, and it's worth checking the website just in case another hiker decides to cancel last minute. The next thing that you need to purchase is a bus ticket to take you from Hobart to the Port Arthur Historic Site, which costed me $35 from the Pentecost Wilderness Journeys website. You will also need to buy a second bus ticket to take you from the Port Arthur Historic Site back to Hobart after you finished your hike. I also booked a stay at the Best Western Hotel the night before my hike and the night after my hike, which costed me $150 per night. Finally, the last thing that you'll need to purchase is a flight to Hobart, and I was lucky enough to be leaving from Melbourne, so the flight only costed me about $250 return. So how did I get to the Three Capes? So to get to the Three Capes hike, I had to hop on a one hour flight from Melbourne to Hobart, and then I stayed a night at the Best Western Hotel. In the morning, I walked 10 minutes to the Pentecost Wilderness Journeys office to check in at 7.30 a.m. and I hopped on the 7.45 a.m. bus to Port Arthur Historic Site. Once I got to the Port Arthur Historic Site, I walked downstairs to check in at this desk and drop off my bags at this locker and I had about two hours of free time to roam around. The Port Arthur Historic Site is the best preserved convict site in Australia and I enjoyed walking around the site and learning the region's dark history. At 11am I was picked up by this eco cruise which took me to Denman's Cove where I started the Three Capes walk. However, along the way we stopped by some amazing sea cliffs and I got to see some dolphins in the water which was awesome. Once we got to Denman's Cove we had to take our shoes off and walk to the beach in knee deep water as the sandbanks were stopping the boat from getting any closer so it's a good idea to pack a towel just in case this happens to you. Finally, when we made it to Denman's Cove, I chucked my shoes back on and got some photos with this sign before starting this multi-day adventure. So what's the hike actually like? Alright, so let's go through the hike day by day. On day one, it took me only two hours to walk from Denman's Cove to Surveyor's Hut. This hike is a total of four kilometers and it's pretty easy and flat and you'll pass by some beautiful eucalyptus woodlands and coastal heath. Along the way, you'll pass by Surveyor's Cove, which is a nice spot to stop for lunch or enjoy a nice cold dip in the water like I did. When I got to Surveyor's Hut, I was absolutely blown away by the facilities as the hut was complete with two kitchens, a barbecue, a super comfy mattress and this amazing deck looking over Cape Rail. On day two, it took me four and a half hours to hike from Surveyor's Hut to Munro Hut and I covered a total of 11 kilometers. The walk on this day started off with a short climb up Arthur's Peak which wasn't that difficult but once you make it to the top you can enjoy amazing views of the Crescent Bay and Cape Rayul. During the walk look out for this really nice spot which is a great place to stop for lunch and take in beautiful views of the cliffs below. Before long you'll make it to Munro Hut which has similar facilities to surveyors except it has this incredible lookout looking over Munro Bight and Cape Hoy. On day 3, I walked for 6 hours and covered 19 kilometers, which was the most distance of any other day but the best part about this day was that I didn't have to carry a heavy pack with me. The track takes you out to Cape Pillar and returns back to Munro Hut so in the morning I offloaded my essentials in a smaller day pack and left my heavy pack at the hut for the day. This day was my absolute favorite as I was walking on this amazing boardwalk with panoramic views over the ocean in the distance. Soon I started seeing views of Cape Pillar and Tasman Island and the track features a few steep staircases but it's nothing too crazy. Eventually, I found myself climbing to the top of Cape Pillar where I could look out to this spectacular view of Tasman Island and this was the biggest highlight of the hike for me. I literally had goosebumps this entire time and the views as you continue walking just get better and better. After enjoying some lunch, I turned back around and picked up my bag at Munro Hut before continuing on to Radakuna Hut for a relaxing sleep before my last day. On the final day of the hike, I walked a total of 14 kilometers, and it took me 6 hours to walk from Radakuna Hut to Fortescue Bay. I woke up at 6am 
Sam and had some recce before hitting the trail and tackling the toughest challenge of the hike, Mount Fortescue. The hike up Mount Fortescue took me about two hours to complete and featured some amazing rainforest scenery which was so different to any other section of the track I had come across. It was raining the night before so the forest was so vibrant and I was really distracted by the scenery to notice all the stairs I was climbing up. After about four hours walking, I offloaded my big pack into a smaller pack like everyone else and continued down to check out the view at Cape Hoy which was amazing. From this lookout, you can look down over the impressive sea cliff and you might even see some rock climbers dangling down the totem pole. After walking back to pick up my big pack, I continued following the track down to the end of the hike and made it to Fortescue Bay where I relaxed on the sand and went for a nice cold dip in the water. So how did I get back to Hobart? So from Fortescue Bay, I was picked up at 4pm by the Pentecost Wilderness Journeys bus and taken to the Port Arthur Historic Site. From here, I stayed on the same bus which took me all the way back to Hobart. When you are booking the Three Capes hike, you will have the option to book a 2pm or 4pm bus and I decided on the 4pm bus as I wanted to take my time hiking and relax at Fortescue Bay. So what did I pack? The Three Capes website has an amazing packing list which I used to plan my hiking kit and as I was hiking during summer, I didn't really have to wear that many layers as it was about 23 degrees each day. But just to give you some ideas, here is everything that I brought on the trail with me. So who would I recommend this hike to? In my opinion, this is the perfect gateway for anyone that wants to get into multi-day hiking or just challenge yourself on one of Australia's most iconic hikes. The accommodations are built to accommodate up to 48 hikers per day and I think in my group there are at least 24 of us. If you are looking to challenge yourself this year by going on your first overnight hike, I highly recommend you give this one a go. The huts along the way are so luxurious and there are plenty of books and board games inside to play with your fellow hikers. When is the best time to do this hike? I I think the best time to do this hike is definitely during summer, from December to the end of February where it's likely to be sunny and less windy. However, you can do this hike at any time of the year and each season would be an entirely different experience. I completed the hike at the start of February this year and I would love to go back during winter with some mates and experience it in the cold and wet conditions. This hike is one of my favourite hikes that I've ever done and I hope this video inspires you to actually hop on the Three Capes website and look into giving this hike a go yourself. If you want to check out the whole route or read the packing list, I'll include those links in the description below as well as the links to my socials where you can find more videos of this incredible hike. Thank you so much for watching and if you've ever completed the Three Capes hike before, then please tell me about your experience in the comments down below. Take care and I will see you in the next video. Bye.